afternoon, beautiful saints. I thought that I would take this opportunity to record a message. It's Palm Sunday, so let us pray. Lord, may my lips be as the pen of a ready writer, as I bring a word to your people and speak in your name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm trusting that all of you enjoyed our Bishop Steve's service today, and particularly his message. Um, for me, the central call to us as Christians at this time, to call out Hosanna, Lord hear us, Lord answer us, was particularly powerful. I wanted to take a moment and share some thoughts with you as we enter into this holiest of weeks. As believers, year by year, we make this pilgrimage with Jesus, and it is an opportunity for us to deepen in our faith. And how is this? Well, uh, you have heard me say many times before that as a believer, it is no longer about who you are, but rather about the one to whom you belong. Because through our baptism, we die to self and we rise to Christ. But who is this one to whom we all belong? How are we to come to know more deeply the nature, the intention, the character, the essence of this Jesus who is the image of the invisible God. Well, the events of Holy Week are the dramatic fulfillment of Jesus' life and ministry. It is for this that he is coming to the world. And today's readings take us through this week. And so we've created a pack um, of Holy Week that can be found on our website, which allows us to pause on each of the key events of this week so that we may savor these moments and come to deepen our experience and grow in our understanding of the message this word became flesh seeks to bring not just to us as individuals but to us as a whole human family. We begin this journey today with Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion, where we hail Jesus as our King and Savior. And this is right that we begin this week with this confession. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So I want you to pause for a moment and ask yourself, what does this mean to you? What does Jesus being your Savior and King mean? For those crowds lining the road into Jerusalem, it meant many different things. I do think it's safe to say that generally there was a mood of expectation among them. Perhaps God had really heard their cries under the oppression of the Roman Empire. Perhaps this was their Moses who could do signs and wonders and lead them out of slavery, restoring the promised land. Perhaps this was a warrior king with a mighty hand in the conquering style of the great warrior King David from whose line Jesus hailed. Expectation, that is the mood of this day. So let's take a deeper look at some of the choices Jesus made for this dramatic entry into Jerusalem and, and what can we learn from this? Here was no show of might and splendor. Jesus sends his disciples to look for a donkey, not a horse, but a donkey. He does not have a gleaming saddle, but rather they place their cloaks on it. This would dramatically reduce the impact of his entrance. Rather than this mighty steed that can twirl and gallop, Jesus is on a slow and bumbling donkey. What do you suppose the message is that Jesus wants to send about who this Holy One of Israel is and about who we are? Expectation. We all have expectations of God. Many of you have heard me say that we must come to church expectant. And it's true, we must enter this week expectant. We must be expectant that our Saviour and our King will hear us and will meet us in our place of need. But what are we expecting? Especially at this time, with the pandemic raging through the human family. How are we to understand what we can expect from God? 
And this is a very important question because the same crowd that hails Jesus as Messiah will by Friday be chanting crucify him. In part because Jesus had disappointed them, had not lived up to their expectations, had not behaved according to their desire, had failed them. Now, I'm sure that you are better Christians than me, and we've never felt this way about God. Angry, confused, disappointed. You've never turned to God as your Savior and King and asked Him to vindicate you in the face of your enemies, to smite those that harm you, to protect you and those you love from violence and death. And when God does not come through in the way that we expect, when those we love do die, when we experience violence at the hands of criminals, when we watch the wicked prosper and those who take bribes and steal get away with it, don't we wonder what kind of saviour king this is? The central message for me of entering his city on a donkey is one about power. God is all-powerful. Yet God does not see power in the same way that the world has conceived it. God is radically and profoundly different. Rather than wielding this great power over us, God seeks to show us the power of humility, obedience, and self-giving love. That the world truly can be transformed, our relationships with one another healed, by this power of love. The power of the Lord Jesus is compassion, mercy, and companionship alongside. On Palm Passion Sunday, we see God in the actions of humility of our Lord Jesus. Christ humbles himself in order to win our hearts. From a position of great weakness, he comes but immense and unbreakable love. And this same power is alive and reigns and is active in our lives through every generation for all time. My prayer is, may you experience the liberating power of God's love, mercy and companionship as we journey together with him to the cross. In the name of Christ. Amen.